Hi, Saha. Hi, John. Nice to see you. A few familiar so, names and faces. Mm -hmm. I've got a fellow uh, tech entrepreneur here, Rebecca. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> all the familiar faces it's great awesome i'll just keep um, admitting people as they come in um but yeah i think we can just start it um right so welcome everyone um before we start i would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today um, and pay my respects to their elders past and present um i extend that respect as well to aboriginal and torres strait islander people here today um please please do get comfy and share where you're tuning in from um i myself is in Wurundjeri country um and yeah if you can just type in the chat say where you're coming from um and do your own like acknowledgement acknowledgement of country that would be nice and yeah so as you can see and as you all know um today we have the founder of hello good world rachel whitler and also Sparks um, event and program lead, Asha. Right. My screen just <laughs> froze, that scared me. <laughs> right. All the tech things. Right, uh, it's, it's the scary. Things. So um, it is actually freezing. Right it away. has actually frozen. Are you okay? Or would you like me to take over? Yeah, I think if you could. Yeah, amazing. So. Thank you, Priscilla, for uh, welcoming everybody here today. Uh, as we mentioned, I'm thrilled to be hosting Rachel from Hello Good World for our next little founder fireside chat, uh, following on from having the beautiful Jenny Lee from Bubble, um, Bubble Tea Club last month. Uh, so I think we are in for a a good rambling conversation down many rabbit holes. Uh, I know that so many of the people uh, that are engaged with the Spark community care about good business and the power of business and the power of startups and tech to do good in the world. Uh, so I feel that this conversation with Rachel, I think we're going to go down, uh, who knows where we will end up. We do have a little bit of a structure that we want to loosely stick to, but we really welcome you to uh, be able to pop your contributions, thoughts, ideas, questions uh, in the chat as well. And Priscilla and or myself, depending if her tech comes back on board, uh, will work to bring them into the conversation as well. So... It will be flexible, it will be fun. And I think uh, for me personally, I am uh, very excited for you to hear this founder story. I think it's going to be really relatable uh, on so many levels. Um, if who here, if we can get an idea in the chat, who has a startup or an idea that they are working on? Do you wanna pop that in the chat? Or are you just an enthusiast and a supporter? Uh, what's what's your role? Why are you showing up here today? I'd love to see, uh, get a feel for who's in the room in the chat as well. Oh, hi, Andrew, nice to see you here as well. We've got a couple of um, people who participated in the Deacon Startup Competition. Great to see you here today. So I know we definitely have founders in the room. As Rachel mentioned, we also have um, other techie friends that she has found. Um, but Priscilla, if you're happy with that, we might I might get Rachel to uh, introduce herself and then we can cruise through the next hour together. And uh, yeah, I think that would be great. Sorry, just had a bit of a tech issue on my side, but <laughs> But Absolutely I think fine. that was an amazing introduction, as always. And yeah, we can we can uh, continue into the you know the Q and A or interview Thank part you. of it. Beautiful. Thank you, Priscilla. So Rachel, you're here. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Uh, I know Rachel from when I had my first. Well, not my first. I had an idea a social enterprise kind of idea in the middle of COVID. And a friend put me in contact with a marketing guru who works in guru. <laughs> Experts Stop that work it. in <laughs> you need to have a conversation with Rachel. Her knowledge, um, her manner, like you're just going to love 
who she is. And I did. I remember walking around my backyard in lockdown going like, this woman's knowledge is incredible. She has made me feel so safe with my idea. Um, I know I'm in good hands. Uh, so a lot has happened since then, Rachel. That was with your, biz, uh, with your marketing consultancy. Say hi to the people in the room and let's start there. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome. Thank you for having me. Um, I am calling from Uganda land. I'm up here on the Gold Coast. Um, it is the sun is the sun has just started shining. Um, and yes, as Arja mentioned, I uh, have been in marketing for a very long time. The last three years, I started up my own social enterprise marketing agency. And I was so excited to be working with brands that I loved, the brands that totally aligned with my values. Um, I really was always wanting to find a, a job that I enjoyed um, mm -hmm. and working with people that I uh, believed in their business actually became one of my biggest sort of um, motivations mm -hmm. for being in startup land, small business land, when the going gets tough, I realized I needed something more than just income to keep me going. And I really did land on this beautiful landscape, which is social enterprise, profit for purpose, impact led, whatever, however people want to identify their business. People that wanted to make a change through business. Um, we had this vision statement that was called Together We Thrive, Leading Better Business. And so it was basically every day I'd start my day thinking, how could I create a better world doing what I was doing? And in that instance, um, and over the last sort of three, three and a half years, that has been through the um, the format of marketing and helping small business grow. Um, I love the sector so much and over time I continue to notice that there were still uh, problems. Um, you can't be, you can't not be in it and see, <laughs> particularly yeah. with marketing, right? You've got people constantly, you're immersed in the industry and all the different facets of the industry as well. So I can imagine you would start to see uh, some pretty consistent problems starting to show up. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, marketing in itself is fairly inaccessible to really small business owners. Uh, I provided a wide range of server services from mentoring to marketing implementation, to giving pro bono or match funding to try and reduce all of those resistances for small business to just get, be able to get started. But um, I still found a few problems. And actually, what, the, what it was coming back to is that it was really hard for small businesses to gain trust from um, consumers uh, because there is a marketing concept, know you, like you, trust you. And that takes a long time for people to get to know you, to like you, and then to trust you enough to buy from you. And the other piece was, is that in social enterprise or however you want to identify your business, because that is its own problem in itself, um, there's actually a real lack of education around this sector too. And so um small businesses having to try and educate consumers and build trust it just always felt like a real minefield um saying that there was obviously some success otherwise I wouldn't have been able to do it for for three years it does, but exist, kind of, it does exist in this area where there are um opinions that lead to confusion that lead to frustration which lead to feeling like you've got business owners that are constantly feel like they're at the drawing board working out which way to go forward again that's right yeah. that's right and from a marketing standpoint that I not kind of noticed that there were two types of consumer there was the ones that were switched on that actually are more in tune with greenwashing and ethical washing and they do a lot of research before they buy that in turn means that it takes them even longer to mm. build trust. They need to do their research. And if people don't have all of that information clearly identified throughout their whole marketing journey, that um, was causing a lot of the inconsistencies with people maybe hearing about them, but it never turning into sales. The second part is, is that I think the general consumer 
generally um, feels quite powerless about the social and environmental change that needs to happen around the world. They want to be a part of it, but they have no idea what the power of their dollar can actually um, mean. And they have no idea that there is this kind of profit for purpose realm of amazing, amazing businesses that can actually create that true change just by kind of switching um, to uh, provider or, or business um, and, and helping and really obviously change the world. That intersection there of voting for the world you want through the dollar that you spend and that sort of conscious consumer kind of idea, maybe that's a good place to introduce Hello Good World and what that is because that that's it, isn't it? It's that it's that interface between businesses that are doing really good and finding uh, it hard to get traction and these consumers that either need a whole lot of information at the ready to make that purchasing decision or can't quite make the decision because they're not sure that their dollar matters. That's right. That's right. And it really is a, a concept that I've been thinking about for a long time. And then it's gone really into uh, overdrive quite quickly, which I'm sure we will um, discuss as, as th this conversation goes on. But absolutely, I kind of um, have continued to want to support and help grow the sector, create that change through the power of the consumer. And this is when I kind of um, landed on the idea of Hello Good World and that Hello Good World, um, we've, we've recently created our vision, vision statement for Hello Good World, and it's an impact mind for humankind. Mm, that's nice. We're a whole <laughs> range of technologies to create social and environmental change. Um, right now, Hello Good World for the consumer is a... Um, Amazon for change. So a marketplace platform where people can buy products and help amazing small businesses uh, start to gain traction, knowledge, uh, gain trust because they're all on this one platform. And the idea that originally came to me with House of Eden Studio was again, coming back to that togetherness, that together mm -hmm. we thrive and bringing everyone into one place so we can all educate the consumer together. We can all build trust together. Um, but it goes beyond that. The, the first major piece of unique technology that we're building at the moment is a transparency score. So um, consumers will actually start to have the power of where their dollar is going, not just based on their values and they can shop by the SDGs, but there'll be a transparency score that is uh, available to the consumer out of 100 for ethics, sustainability and cause driven activities. So we're not necessarily um, directing people towards the you have to be a social enterprise to be on our model um, to, to be welcomed onto our platform but we're guiding people towards that direction and, and towards uh, what they can do to create that lift in their score the idea being behind all of this is right now it's the brands that are doing better that want to be on the platform because they want to be involved in part of this they want to get their score um, as the technologies uh, open up and, but the, the real core of this idea is that as we all build the profile together, it's actually going to really navigate that true social change that needs to happen because the businesses that aren't ready or aren't willing to get a score, it will actually really start to show up. Um, and if consumer demand pushes that they want more transparency, they want more trust from the business. Um, our, our plan is, is to really drive towards those United Nations Sustainable Development Goals by actually, um, yeah, act activating the consumer. How good. And what a, what a switch from a, um, a smaller boutique agency through to, you know, creating a unique piece of um, tech to be able to really open up um, and start to really, yeah, disrupt and change what those e-commerce platforms have looked like and what the online marketplace looks like for all of these brands. 
But I think you touched on something really cool there where, yeah, there are these really big brands that come through, but in your heart, you love the small business owner. So you do have a tiered approach to being able to have a really inclusive approach to those that have the intention of showing up for their businesses, for the good of the world, for however they identify with their business. Mm. Um, Is that linked to your very strong why? that you yeah. have like there is that real underpinning of um inclusive business as well here yeah absolutely that that's a that's a huge part because another thing I guess working s- s- directly with so many of those solo entrepreneurs one of the biggest things that I found was that they didn't have the confidence that they had an impactful or a ethical sustainable business in whatever form it came in but they didn't have the confidence to even talk about that because they didn't feel that they personally were big enough to be able to talk about that. They didn't personally feel that they were ready to identify as a social enterprise because they weren't able to put as much of a percentage of profits as a 51% back into their original mission. They looked at so many different avenues um, and could constantly find faults in what they were doing rather than constantly finding all of the pros that they're they have chosen that is so much better than uh, potentially a competitor. Um, But if they don't voice those things, it is hard for the consumer to gain that trust, to learn about the education, why they are better than the other. So yeah, yeah, our our technologies are very much based around um, helping the the small business owner. And that's definitely at the core of what we're doing. Yeah, I think it's an absolutely beautiful, value and principle that you hold dear at Hello Good World. Uh, For those of you who are on the call now, we've got a nice group of us in the room here. Um, We have Rachel from Hello Good World with us. And this business was an idea six months ago, five, six, Mm. where... Is it yeah, six now? So, <laughs> I think it was five months ago that we did the startup weekend. We did the startup weekend. So I'm so keen to hear, and I've heard parts of it, but Rachel, I would absolutely love if you could share from that spark of an idea for you're working in your consultancy, you're three and a half years into having a successful small business, working in an area that you love, seeing a few problems, you know, brains ticking away. You have a spark of an idea five months ago and I remember seeing the post of I don't know if I'm going to go to this startup weekend or not but I might give it a go I remember reading that from you I don't know if it was in a text or yeah five months ago and now you're here so in two minutes or less what has that five months (laughs) it takes a special kind of founder to get the traction that you have in five months and show up for that idea tell us about that experience so many people here that are likely in the room or listening to this recording, they've been to a start, you know, they've had a startup competition or they've jumped into a, um, a hack weekend or a startup weekend or a tech stars weekend. So I feel it would be very inspiring and very relatable to hear that journey uh, mm-hmm. for you over the last five or six months. Yeah, I mean, I'll be very open and vulnerable by saying that I was incredibly nervous about doing a startup weekend um, because I had had a uh, another business with a failed uh, business partnership that um, was not pleasant at all. And the idea of kind of like this idea, this spark that I had, this thing inside of me, sharing that with someone was an incredibly vulnerable moment to me and the rules of the startup weekend is that it's got to be a problem a a product that you've not worked on before you can't recruit before um and all of these things I had mentioned to someone that I had done um some collaboration work with through my marketing agency I said I can't tell you what the idea is what name is like any of these things just so you know I am going to be joining this startup weekend if you want to come along buy a ticket let me know if you're interested like we can see if you're interested in joining the team when you hear my 60 second pitch on the night and for those of you that haven't been part of that it's literally a 60 seconds I think there are probably about 60 different 60 second ideas 
Um, only about 10 of them went through. We then luckily, Hello Good World was one of the ones that were picked, one of those ones that other people had started to think, yeah, okay, this is not a bad idea. And then we ran into groups, like it felt like within about half an hour, we had a group of a 48 hour startup weekend. Um, it was incredible. Like it, there, there was so many amazing things that came out of it. So many people on that weekend that said to us, if you can create multiple income streams, we'll invest in you tomorrow and all of these sorts of things. And we were like, hang on a minute, maybe this idea is way bigger than I ever even thought. I just thought, why, how can I help my cus current customer base now, even in like a time like COVID um, where small, small business is struggling? I never thought about how this can kind of like really help the longer, um, like the, the larger picture of this all. Um, we didn't win, we came second, um, but that didn't stop me. After that weekend, after that momentum, I just wanted to keep going. Um, I started just looking up pre-accelerator programs everywhere, <laughs> like <laughs> abroad here in Australia. Luckily, I um, just a few weeks later, I was on a pre-accelerator program at the River City Labs in Brisbane. Um, part of the Australian Computer Society group, um, met uh, a lovely business owner, Beck, that was in the room. Uh, we had, I think, just four um, businesses that had got through their selection process of 20. And then I had the imposter syndrome, like, I'm only a few weeks old. How the hell have I been accepted for this? It was incredible. It was amazing. Um, and then following on from that, so five weeks after that, I had given myself some pretty ambitious goals. I told my mentor that I was going to have 20 brands on the um, platform and that by the pitch night that I would be, um, yeah, talking about this product and service, but it's actually going to be in action more, less than a, more than just the kind of MVP that we had done at the startup weekend. <laughs> uh, we would have done like certain things um, to, to really gain, gain that traction. And we did it. So at the end of July, um, within yeah two and a half months, that had all gone really well. Um, and we've just kind of followed the momentum from their relationships. Uh, all of these things have definitely opened up eyes to yeah, larger relationships, um, potential avenues in the future, potential investors, potential accelerator programs to move on to. Um, we were accepted on to London Tech Week. Obviously, uh, I don't know whether you can tell by my accent, but I'm not originally from Australia. I've always wanted to do uh, something to be able to use business as a tool to be able to go home as well. Um, and so being accepted on to London Tech Week was just a huge uh, kind of dream come true moment with this amazing business. And I've actually begun to be able to eventually <laughs> travel with it and uh, see my family more often and like, all of these synchronicities are really coming together um yeah off the back of that uh again more people just interested in talking to us brands that house of eden studio would never have people never would have been able to, to talk to um some of the Australia's largest charities have been in contact asking how they can get their products on the website and things like that. Um, there's been just incredible uh, momentum by, by using these opportunities for exposure that really just uh, takes time and tenacity <laughs> to, to get to that stage, but it's just been a, an amazing journey so far. And I think with you speaking to that piece, and obviously you've named tenacity, what do you think are some of those qualities and you can totally um, give yourself snaps and pats on the back, but what do you think are those qualities or like Instagram quotes or moments or mantras or things that you say to yourself that have underpinned that, that journey, that um, the kind of founder that you are for Hello Good World? Are there particular qualities where you're like, Oh yeah, that that's definitely helping. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, it, for me, it's, it goes way back to just my vision. I know mm -hmm. that I'm on my life path. I know that this is my journey. I know this is my calling and just to continue showing up for it in whatever way um, holds the most impact is definitely uh, what's kind of pushing me. So um, we, I have obviously been having to like manage like two businesses now. And so for for some parts, Hello Good World takes priority, then the next bit, House of Eden, and it's been kind of going back and forth. 
um, since then. Really looking forward to the end of the year where it's just going to be all hella good love because it's not that I don't want to do the marketing services, um, but if I know that my life calling is to create change through small business and providing solutions for small business, I know that it's going to take a back seat because Hello Good World, through the power of technology, has the power to truly change the world more so than um, that one-on-one -on -one impact that I have with, with a small business, um, being able to help multiple people in so many different ways. I think that courage that you have spoken about just there uh, is a beautiful piece. And before when Priscilla, you and I were talking, we were talking about um, the idea that, you know, you feel like you're reaching a moment where uh, House of Eden was your market research. That was your paid to practice that led to this piece. And I loved that reframe because Often in this world we can, and particularly women, we can set ourselves up to think that we're always behind or we're changing tack again, or our why wasn't quite honed in enough and didn't quite apply again. So it was so refreshing to hear that it was like, wow, no, this is clearly the next chapter. My why is more dialed in, more laser focused. Could you sense that shift within yourself that this was more it <laughs> because you obviously you're you, you know you come across as a woman of integrity and that was very clear in house of eden anyway mm. but this just feels like extra more clarity more dialed in so is that an accurate reflection yeah definitely um i i'm very strong-willed <laughs> i am and so i know that whatever i do if i put my head into it enough and focus on it enough, it, it can work out. Um, saying that I have done my fair share of 20 hour days and things like that, which I do not recommend, but when you do something you love and you just got that few more hours to go, you just sometimes have that rocket fuel out of nowhere to be able to do it. And so I think when you've come back to the why, and I really don't actually promote that at all, but when you come back to your why and you kind of like think about that bigger picture of a couple of hours sleep or changing the world it kind of like <laughs> comes as a, a, a second nature and I know that that's kind of um I've worked with a lot of organizations that are working either in their company culture or businesses that um, are also directing towards opportunities um, to create better company cultures and looking at a lot of the statistics and the reasons why people actually want a job it does go beyond making money and mm. and so yeah for me always coming back to what the the like grand plan is that bigger vision and um I like do visualizations for for what that future looks like um no matter what the context or what the medium what the actual... is that I'm working on at the time yeah yeah <sighs> That's juicy and good. How beautiful. <laughs> um, before we jump into another one, I'd love to hear from anyone. If you want to pop any questions in the chat for us to be able to um, speak to, we'll, we'll keep chatting. But if there are things that you're curious about, um, I know that I'm keen to hear about um, like this supply chain piece and mm. impact. Um, I know that's something that I'm passionate about and I think the SDGs cover that off nicely. So that's probably where I'm keen to, um, to chat further and dive a little bit deeper now. Mm. Um, but I would love any questions from anyone, whether it's founder related or Hello Good World related, um, would really love. Oh, Rosie, Rosie, you, Rosie joint, you were on our bubble tea chat. I thought you might like this topic. It's great to have you here. We can start here. Um, does Hello Good World operate with a behaviour change piece to reduce consumption altogether or is it more focused on sustainable consumption? Oh, good question. Uh, actually, um, consumption has been one of the my biggest concerns for years and years. I'm actually uh, a great believer in, in, in circular economy too, don't get me wrong. Um, I... I, I have struggled with this one myself because obviously uh, 
consumption isn't the solution. Like in, in, in all honesty, it's not. But also I have noticed that um, from all the work that I've done, there's only so much that I can change about what consumers do now. And I mean, I'd love to say that, it, that there'll be a day that people are kind of, everyone's growing their own food again and all of those sorts of things. But um, Hello Good World is based on um, just making a change with the consumption that you're doing right now. Because at the moment, the world is not at a stage where we not we stop buying from, from other people. So it's about how can we make it better? So that is looking at the ethical sustainability and the cause driven activities, uh, which is kind of what um, ticks our boxes when we're kind of looking at the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals from a holistic point of view. Um, I feel like that's a really good um, point. And as, a, as someone like I am the kind of consumer or the kind of human that in my 20s I would be upset that I was, you know, flushing the toilet with drinking water when other people didn't have it, or mm. that I was eating sardines, that I wasn't eating sardines over farmed salmon given the consumption rates. Like I have um, lived and breathed that in my 20s as I've wrestled with what consumption looks like, what minimalism looks like for me. And I think for, for where I am at now in my 30s, to be able to know the value of my dollar and where that dollar can go to start to build the world that I want to believe in um, and use that dollar and recirculate that dollar in a way that can be meaningful and have lasting change. Um, I think that bridges that piece between um, reduced consumption, thoughtful consumption and how I can maximize every dollar that I earn or that I have, how can I maximize the good that it does in the world? And for me, that behavior change within myself to move away from almost um, deprivation mm. to celebration uh, was a key moment for me within this journey as a human, right? Where I could feel um, an absolution of guilt to be able to use my dollars to invest in social change and social impact. Um, so Absolutely. that's where those two kind of uh, sit for me and where I uh, feel happy as a consumer to be able to shop by SDGs or. Um, yeah, if I can add, if I can add to that, because I do love a little bit of a uh, data and statistics too, yeah. because uh, I did read some sad facts <laughs> um, that we were 43 years behind schedule in reaching the United Nations goals by 2030. That's a really, and the US is going backwards. That's, that's a really sad fact. The fact that I think a lot of people wanted to kind of look at travel as being one of these things. Uh, well, look at when the world shuts down, the sustainability, um, climate change doesn't get any better. Um, what I did uh, do a lot of research on and after being in the social enterprise community for a long time is that the value of working with a social enterprise is at least $3 of value of for every $1 you spend. Um, that figure can go up to $16 or $30 for every $1 you spend, depending on what they're doing and what their impact is. And that is looking at all three parts of that sort of supply chain and the outcomes and what they do with that. I was given a figure, I think it was that the world needs something like $2.73 trillion to actually combat all 17 of those sustainable development goals. Um, that in itself um, made me start looking at business models that could actually achieve that. When I looked at what Amazon did last year, and if just having this vision of Amazon, if they, if every single product that was sold on Amazon was sustainable, ethical, um, cause driven we would be able to actually reach all 17 of those goals in two years. Wow. And so that in <laughs> itself was what has been charging me every single day. Thank you for sharing that, Rachel. I really appreciate that. Um, it sounds like we 
all like some of us might have that same thing where yeah you go to bed at night being like what does it all mean um if you don't mind me asking because I often come up with business ideas and then the thing that stops me is I realize it still requires a profit um and it would still require people to stay on the I suppose to keep needing a product as opposed to hopefully transitioning so would it be fair to say that for you perhaps part of the goal is that you don't necessarily have the same group of loyal consumers that there are new consumers who are reducing their consumption because I think that's the bit that I I really struggle to make peace with within myself and I'd love to know how you did that so that I can also start to learn <laughs> um, to kind of quell that part of myself whenever I think of business ideas. Totally. That's a beautiful question Rosie. Um, it, that could be a whole conversation in itself, but I'll try and try and answer it. Um, so for me, that's also where originally when I was doing um, marketing, I left my job, I started marketing. I marketed for anyone and everyone that I could get some money from because I just needed to sustain a career. And then I realized there were a few brands that I just absolutely loved. But also that because I love them, however much, however hard, I might may have worked twice as hard in the other ones, but the ones that I loved because I was so aligned to their values, I was able to market them so much easier. The results were so much better. Um, and I just told myself I couldn't do it anymore. And so I just constant, consciously made the effort to slowly reduce the capacity for the clients that I didn't align with, increase the capacity for the clients that I did and it's only really from working in the sector all day every day and seeing the amazing business owners the change the true change that we've been able to make um, just hearing that through the power of selling coffee for instance uh, one of my clients has been able to completely educate um, a whole school uh, they have 11 teachers the school um, that they are working with in uh, the Kibera slum is the largest slum in Africa. And during COVID, the going to school was the one and the only chance for those children to have food. So then they were also um, providing food and education. And um, obviously the power of that in itself changes the whole landscape of what it means for that child they can then go on to university afterwards they can then help their whole family slowly uh, come out of poverty and the while we can't necessarily navigate that social return on investment right now because it's a small business and because it's young um that's really what powers me forward so i mean i would i would suggest to maybe look at um what's most important to you but look at the theory of change and what a social return on investment is because then you may be able to find um if if you notice that uh making something that's kind of 90 percent aligned to your values rather than 100 percent aligned um actually allows you to create more profit which in turn actually has a much better social or environmental um, outcome when it comes to kind of the social impact, um, social enterprise or profit for purpose kind of model, then that might be what would uh, rest like easier on your morals perhaps. I think there's a beautiful piece to add here that Rosie, you spoke to as well. And I loved that answer, Rachel, and I feel like that could be a whole chat uh, in, it, in its own, on its own. Um, but there, I think there are the, you know, there are so many more, um, I would say, even in the time that I've been an adult, there are behavior changes that are happening. And within the age that I am, I have friends that in my 20s that never would have considered cloth nappies being a thing that they would do for their children. And they are dogheadedly leading the way even onto their fourth child to that. So they are new consumers looking for that area and that behavior change. You know, so there are, I think, um, new people that haven't considered purchasing here before, making better decisions that uh, do form a part of uh, the clientele within uh, considered consuming. So I think that was a really awesome uh, point that you raised there too, Rosie. Thanks yeah, for your yeah. question. Thank um, you. I appreciate that. And while it might um, 
feel like it's an early adoption rate right now. Early adoption means that you're only kind of hitting 10% of what you, the future will hold for you. Um, and definitely uh, this type of thing uh, is very hot topic across the world for so many different reasons. Um, Australia is a little bit behind in uh, a few few of these parts. So also just Absolutely. like just, just remind yourself that if you are at the beginning of it, you're not like necessarily the copycat, you're like the leader and, and that you're the one leading, paving the way for, for what this change can look like. I think that yeah. piece wraps beautifully into Andrew's question that he has in the chat and he's speaking about how do you handle companies that, um, that offer competing or similar products? Um, given that this is an Amazon type platform, how do you keep them all happy on the platform? Um, yeah, well, this is the thing is that it's actually, um, it's welcome. The, okay, I'll start from the beginning. <laughs> Sorry. The platform is welcomed to those that fit our sort of bronze criteria right now. Just we've got bronze, silver or gold uh, right now which are looking at sort of five elements, the ethics, sustainability, the cause, the impact that they've had, but also your business model. And there are ways for you to learn and increase kind of that um, from a bronze to a silver to a gold. And so it's very much aligned with um, how I was sort of mentioning earlier. But in terms of the actual product, um, it's, the, it's open for that there, there can be multiple different fashion brands there can be multiple different sort of food drink chocolate whatever and that's because we don't want us to be the deciding factor when this is a consumer decision that needs to happen so at the moment the consumers can shop by the sustainable development goals we have two different chocolate companies on there at the moment one is very focused on mental health, mental resilience. The other is about um, beautiful organic chocolates. Um, but uh, so there's, it has a better sort of supply chain, um, but also the fact that they're helping with um, education. So that's where the shopper, we're trying to give the, the consumer the power. And again, that's the same with having the transparency score and the kind of bronze, silver or gold. There are brands that we obviously say that they're not quite ready yet to. Um, but I welcome anyone that is interested or knows brands um, to get, get in touch and don't feel that if we've got one product on there that you can't, um, and, and that's a similar to your product that you can't be on there too. I think it's yeah. such an exciting time for, if there is anyone on the call that does know somebody, it is an exciting time for Hello Good World. Um, I know I'm often like, I'm just going to intro so-and-so to Rachel. I feel like they need to chat. And one of our um, team members at Spark actually is on the platform as well. And I know a couple of our alumni from the Accelerator are looking to get involved as well. So it is accessible from that point. The, um, the joy of being involved with something at such an early stage is a beautiful thing as well. Um, I've got a nice question here from Jaden. I know time's okay. flying with all, all, the, all the beautiful um, conversations. Yeah. Are you able to share any tips, key learnings from your initial go-to-market approach, in particular relating to vendors and partners and what yeah. that looks like? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I think one of the things that has uh, sparked a lot of um, what we do is the fact that we did start at a startup weekend and I kind of um, started talking to uh, mm. Arjia about this earlier. The fact that we were live and visible by other people within uh, 12 hours of a very like very minimum product um, it keeps it's kept eyes on it ever since um, and we've had to continue to work move improve in front of the consumer eye um, there are still hundreds hundreds of things that aren't on the platform yet that we want to um, and so 
the uh, yeah, I, I, I do think that that has really helped with um, the kind of awareness of the business at the same time and getting consumers and brands to be a part of it from the beginning has always been something that's important to me, creating this for the brands rather than for myself, um, getting feedback. So um, in terms of the go-to-market approach when it came to vendors, um, we provided a really easy accessible it was actually sort of no cost to join and only a percentage for um any sales that we made so if we make these sales great that helps everyone but it's there was actually no um stopping them up, like to to join uh, that was really important to us because we wanted to value we wanted to thank those that believed in us and that believed in our vision um so the, the actual approach that I did was I contacted people and I forced myself to not actually speak to I have some of the brands that are on our website were previous clients but I forced myself to talk to people outside of my comfort zone outside of Queensland outside of Australia um, talk to, to different markets um, and two whilst having this kind of conversation confirming that is this like doing the market research at the same time is this something that brands want are they interested in in this change and this vision do they think that these elements of sort of trust and transparency and education that we can all do as a community like together is this something that people are interested in? And so it wasn't necessarily like a sales piece to me. It was more about, are you interested in coming along for the ride? <laughs> are you interested in being part of our vision? As part of a beta tester, can you give me your utmost honest feedback? Can you tell me what we're doing wrong? Um, and that's created a really beautiful community in it itself. Um, I'm literally inspired by the brands that have joined every single day. Uh, it's the, I guess, what I live and breathe and have done for for many years. But without them, we wouldn't be wouldn't be here. Um, I really do believe in the power of relationships as well. Um, whilst we can kind of do as much advertising until the cows come home, those brands they need to know who you are. I think that's really beautiful. Um, a really beautiful answer to um, a, a great question. Um, great question. A great question. And I think I think as as we round out the session, I'm I'm keen to uh, understand or or speak more around. You were visible from as you said, twelve hours. Twelve hours oh, yeah. in, all eyes are on you. Do you think having to get used to that level of, you already mentioned that you're really open to receiving feedback and it does mm. feel like this has been co-created because of that reason. Mm. Do you think that level of visibility has gotten easier? Do you think kind of desensitizing yourself to that expectation that is there at every step of the way has helped you to be your already very strong world? But do you feel like that visibility has um, helped or hindered you being brave in your business in terms of getting more vendors and partners and brands on board? Oh, definitely. Yeah. It, um, it gets I easier. Think, it's like ripping off a band aid. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it was the uh, imposter syndrome as much. I knew, I know that I'm in. I'm well established in the social yeah. enterprise community. I think it was like not being the popular kid. <laughs> And so never really believing that some of the, these amazing cool brands would be interested in like coming along the ride with my vision. <laughs> uh, that was probably the biggest uh, internal uh, shift that I'm definitely still working on. Um, but I think just being like vulnerable and just being yourself, um, being honest. I, I think that those kind of um, parts um really go a long way as well um yeah not I'm not being a sleazy salesman when I'm picking up the phone I'm having a genuine conversation and I genuinely care and I want to help as best possible 
I love that you just referred to you not being the cool kid at school and not 15 minutes ago you were talking about that and the small business owners not feeling like they had a voice so <laughs> it feels it feels like it's, it's gone full circle it definitely does look it, it's those things that I think every business owner probably um has has felt from time to time or had their own struggles whatever it it may be um but yeah uh, absolutely a uh, part of the reason why I had a communications confidence course in my um, marketing agency was because when I worked through my confidence issues, things totally changed for me. Um, I was attracting all of my dream clients and couldn't get enough of them, had to have a wait list and things like that. So yeah, I think um, not necessarily caring as much if people don't, want to be involved then just not your people um I think those are the things that you probably uh experience when you go into your 30s <laughs> it's, it's hard to know which bits you've gotten over and which bits are just because you're no longer in your 20s yeah <laughs> is it wise or is this just part and parcel with, <laughs> with being yeah in your 30s? I, I can totally relate to that um I think you've spoken so beautifully about something that um, I know that you and I have spoken about before, but you know, you can't, you can't have a business or work for yourself without having a personal development journey that kind of sits side by side with it. And I think you've spoken to um, the beauty of being vulnerable, of being honest, um, of facing, you know, of facing up to imposter syndrome and those stretch moments and the holy heck, what have I done? Mm -hmm. Or have I, have I done enough? And that whole um, holistic approach to it being a messy and joyful process. I feel like you've um, shared shared that beautifully with our audience today. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Are there so what what where now? Where we're coming up to Christmas, mm -hmm. the big consumer season. What does that look like for Hello Good World? Is that something that um, you pay more attention to or less attention to? What does the rest of twenty twenty one look like? Absolutely more. Um, yeah, House of Eden will take a little pause so I can focus full time on that. Um, it is my mission to get more brands on board um, during this time. We are just in the final um, sort of closing moments of creating a corporate gift guide. We obviously know the value of um, larger bulk orders, not just for Hello Good World, but for the brands um, and so being able to get a few corporate partners on board over Christmas would be amazing for everyone involved and also a part of the um, education that needs to obviously happen. The next phase for us um, we're hoping to go on to an accelerator program with funding. We're in that chicken and egg scenario with so many parts of our business right now that we do need funding we do need um, a high net worth or an, or an investor to help us with the pre-seed um, there's so many different things we want to do we want to launch the consumer transparency um, mm -hmm. we are moving into the UK um, all, all of these things will just happen a lot slower if um, we can't find that sort of initial investment but I'm pretty confident we will I think it's important to me to make sure it's just partnering with the right people as well um yeah it's it's all about sort of uh we've got the capabilities I've got I am so blessed with an amazing team um but we need funding we need um we need funding for the capacity to it's execute our capabilities yeah <laughs> absolutely so in lieu like if we're not a high net worth individual uh is there another way that we can support you and hello good world yeah we <laughs> the are moment, the people that are listening to this or in the room definitely what, we, what can we do to support you yeah we are a very small tech startup in the earliest stages um like share follow us um if you're working for an organization, let me know and I can send them the corporate guide. Um, but also just consider if you do align with our vision, um, consider swapping where you shop this uh, Christmas, Hanukkah, Thanksgiving, whatever. Um, 
religious holidays or just uh, gifting opportunities that you're looking for um yeah it is obviously a high buying period and we would love to maximize our potential on that so personally i'm yeah going to be working on this full time um getting in as many brands as possible to make this as a successful end of year beautiful thank you so much for bringing all of your all of your human and superhuman self to share with our community um you're welcome that time absolutely flew my goodness priscilla <laughs> i will ha i will hand back over to you how did you find have you got any questions for um for rachel as we wrap up Um, I think you already asked um, Rachel, but I was just going to ask, you know, like where we can find Hello Good World, whether you want to like direct people towards your social media, um, obviously the website. Um, yeah, other than that, that was like a really, really insightful conversations, right? Like as a, cons a, cons a consumer myself, like it's always so annoying to look at something and then not knowing whether they're actually green or not and like this is such like a you know technological advancement towards that like that's really amazing it helps a lot of people right in that sense um just getting the headache out of out of that decision making <laughs> yeah um otherwise i think that's all yeah we're just um, I'm nice. <laughs> yeah <laughs> we just found at hellogoodworld.com um look out next year for good world day um it's a initiative that we're doing to try and kind of raise awareness for the sustainable development goals in lots of um small little chunks um and instagram is probably where we're most uh, prominent so uh, follow us at um hellogood.world beautiful Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Thank you. to everyone who joined us live. Uh, it's always a joy to be able to connect with you guys with events like this. If you have any ideas as to who we should talk with next or what you'd like to hear about, uh, please reach out to us at spark at deacon.edu.au. I think that's right. Did I get that right, Priscilla? I did. Amazing. Uh, <laughs> so please reach out. We are here to serve uh, the founders and future founders and the enthusiasts that are in our community. So uh, if you tell us what you want, we will show up and definitely uh, try and provide. So with that, we will round out our uh, amazing October chat with Rachel from Hello Good World. And thank you to Priscilla. Thank you to everyone who has rocked up today. And have the most beautiful evening. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, it's everybody. It's really lovely to have the, the questions come through as well. Thank you. That was great. Thanks, Rosie.